Mr. Speaker, my name is Terry Healy. I'm the very proud but humbled member for Southern River. I acknowledge the Wajak Noongar people, the traditional owners of this land in which we meet, and acknowledge the resilience of their people and of their elders past, present and emerging. And before I do anything in this place, I dedicate my speech today and my work in this chamber to my incredible wife, Catherine Chakalunta Healy, our daughter Heaven, and to our future children. I owe, every, I, I owe everything to my wife. She is my rock, my soulmate, my partner in life, and my comrade. Now, my community should probably have elected Catherine instead, as she, not only is she a better representative than I, but also more caring and more of a community advocate. Now, our families endure so much, and I acknowledge that the only way that we managed the last 18 months was by the sacrifices that my wife and child have already made. And Heaven, our daughter, is amazing and has just transformed and enriched our lives. And whilst I commit myself to the people of Southern River, I also dedicate myself to being the best dad and husband that I can be, because I think I'll be a better member of parliament then. Now I'm lucky to also have a very large and loving family. I also have several mums and several dads. My mother, Rosemary, who raised me as a single mum since I was 18 months old, I owe so much for her sacrifices and her love. My dad, Terry Senior, for his love and guidance. My mother, Martha, Pete, my dad. My dad, Papa Koza. And Kath and I have also lost two of our mothers, Mama Ida and Mama Veronica, well before their time. And we know that they join us today in spirit and will always be there to guide us. To the Chakaluntas back home in Zambia, we also send our love. Ine, Indine, Moana, Wachedwa, Chakalontahili which in Yanja means that I'm a proud Chakalunta Healy. Now, Kath and I are also blessed, Mr Speaker, with many siblings. In Australia, Julie, Erin, Chris, Linus and Maddie. In Zambia, Don, Bridget, Tamika, Pharaoh, Boki, Hope, Suzio, Madaliso and Koza. These form part of the Chakalunta Healy, Tubbs, McGregor, Franz, Tucker, Dunn, Spartalis, Lombardo, Parkers. <laughs> I mentioned my grandparents, Margaret and Bob McGregor, Long-time residents of Thornley, where I spent much of my youth and who would be very proud today. Uncle Bob, my grandfather, also a resident at Riverside Gardens and Brightwater Huntingdale, within my electorate, which is very special to me. And thank you to my best friends, Mo, Steve and Matt. I also acknowledge my best friend, Craig Kunza, who we lost some years ago, and the Kunza family. I know Craig is looking down on all of us here today. I also thank our good friends, Christelle and Laurent, as it was at their wedding that Kath and I reconnected and Kath and I began our romantic relationship. Thank you also to our church community, the Old Apostolic Church of Australia. Now, as a teacher myself, I also acknowledge my many teachers, but in particular, the work of Mrs Lorna Joy, Mr Paul Colombini and Mrs Jane Kavanagh for their guidance and their encouragement. And I owe a very special thank you, of course, to the well over 100 volunteers who were a part of Team Terry and the efforts in Southern River. And the fact that I stand here today is only due to thousands of volunteer hours, door knocking and phoning, persuading, fighting and working for the people and families that I am now honoured to represent. Together, we connected with our community and gained their support to build trains, fund schools and restore a focus on local jobs. To our volunteers here tonight and watching online, all of this is due to your hard work. I can say that I stand here, but I know that you all stand with me. I want to thank my campaign team. Thank you to Sue Ellery. And I wish to acknowledge that last week, Sue Ellery became the first female leader of the government in the Legislative Council in WA history. And I congratulate her on this. The rest of our core team, Cara, Lucy, Julie, M, Kim PB, Pierre, Andre, thank you. There are also so many special people who have played a role. And those people know who they are. And to those here tonight, I can hear my daughter. <laughs> and those here tonight and many watching online, I give my thanks. I congratulate the Premier and Deputy Premier and our team at party office, led by Patrick and Lenda, as well as the many seen and unseen people who played their role in bringing us to government. I also make mention of our awesome team in our Southern River electorate office, Di, Kelly and Chris. 
Now, I've also worked with some incredible statesmen and stateswomen in Glenn Stirl, Chris Evans, Norm and Ros Marlborough, Kate Doust and the member for Warmborough. Each have their flaws, but they all show me a lifetime of service. <laughs> they show me a lifetime of service to their community, something that I seek to emulate. I thank our local papers for providing fair and impartial coverage of the election campaign and outstanding service to the people of Southern River. I thank the Gosnells Council, their incredible CEO, staff and the Gosnells residents for the honour and privilege of being one of your Gosnells councillors. What I learned as a councillor was not only the privilege of representing and advocating for my community, but also the importance of transparency and accountability in all levels of government. And I commend the work of the State Member for Perth in this field. Now, it was very important to me in my time on Gosnells Council that I was able to have passed Gosnells First online gift and travel registers, which provide greater levels of transparency and accountability for my community. I mentioned the incredible Gosnells councillor, Alwyn Searle, our mayor, councillor Bill Whiffen and Pat Morris. Now, the work has already begun delivering on our commitments. We will build Metronet, in particular, the Circle Line, with two Canning Vale train stations. We will build two new primary schools in my community after no new primary schools were built in Southern River in eight and a half years. No more families will be told they're not families. Western Power is safe. Jobs will stay here in WA. TAFE fees have frozen and my students will once again get apprenticeships in WA. And my community has once again elected representatives who will work for them. Now I stand in the shadow of an incredible member for Southern River in Paul Andrews. Even today when I door knock, and yes I've already been back out door knocking since the election, people mention to me the incredible work that Paul did in our community. And if I were to be even half the MP that Paul Andrews was, I think I'll be doing well. I also thank Gim Andrews for her incredible support. And I also acknowledge the service that Peter and Jenny Betts have made in our area. Now I stand here as a former teacher of Southern River and of Canning Vale, but I seek to be a champion of all schools, all students, educators and families. And whilst I'm honoured to be the representative for Southern River, I already greatly miss being a teacher in Southern River. I miss my students, although I don't know if they miss me, they are likely happy to have a, uh, to have a break from grumpy old man Mr Healy. Now I was proud to teach in Gosnells, but I was not proud of what the Barnett government was doing to my kids. And make no mistake, an attack on them was an attack on me. When I started at Southern River College, we were lucky to have the hard-working Chris Talentire as our local MP, and his guidance has been of incredible influence on me. Now, during the 2013 election, I was a representative on our school board at Southern River, as was Peter Abetz. Mr Abetz and Mr Barnett promised that all pre-1980 schools would be redeveloped, including Southern River. Now, an important promise was made that was then broken. Following the Liberal win in 2013, we as a school were then told that not only would our school not be redeveloped, but that our funds would be cut. The Sunday Times listed Southern River College as the fourth worst cut of all schools in WA. Then TAFE fees started rising and would rise well over 500%. And my students in Gosnells and Southern River were being attacked and the Liberal government supported and proposed these moves. A conversation with Sue Ellery about what I could do to help my students led me to take a break from teaching and stand as the Labor representative for my community. Now, Mr Speaker, my election fulfills a family commitment made 113 years ago when my great-grandfather, Councillor James Healy, stood as the very first Labor candidate for Canning, which then covered what is now Southern River. And whilst he didn't win when he ran in 1904, I stand here proudly in his memory. James Healy was a Fremantle councillor, and I'm very proud that he was this community's very first Labor candidate. One local newspaper said, Mr Healy has a fluent tongue, and should he be elected, he'll be very useful to his party when they want to insult the Speaker. <laughs> In that theme, I also congratulate you, Mr Speaker, on your election. <laughs> and I look forward to working with you as your acting Speaker. Now, 1904 was when Labor first formed government in WA under the first Labor Premier, Henry Daglish. While James Healy was not an MP in that government, as I've said, he was certainly proud to help us get there. Now, the minority Daglish Labor government of 1904 laid the foundation for what was 
until 2017, WA Labor's biggest election victory, when we won 68 per cent of the Assembly seats in 1911. This 40th parliament, of course, has 69.5 per cent of seats held by Labor MPs, the highest in WA history to date. Now, I mentioned <laughs> another Healy who took a stand locally in, on freedom of speech. My great uncle, Kevin Healy, was a member of the Communist Party of Australia, and in 19, 1949, he was charged with sedition for his political membership. He was later acquitted. Now, he argued in court that he had a right of freedom of speech and that whilst a communist, he was a passionate Australian first, and that free and open debate was not sedition, but actually a core right within our democracy. A very Healy thing, he represented himself at his trial, and I quote his final statement. The issue in this case is the right to hold and express politi political opinions, and a decision of acquittal is essential to safeguard free speech and political freedom. We in this place must protect all political freedoms and freedom of speech in our community, even when we don't agree with the other point of view. Now, Madam Acting Speaker, I seek to inform this Assembly more about who I am and I declare an interest. I am a member of many community organisations and I declare, as a Member of Parliament, I will help advocate for the causes that they represent. I have been a member of Scouts for almost 30 years and I cannot emphasise enough the incredible role that my Scout leaders played in raising me. Kevin and Colleen and later Rhonda and Barry Green and an army of other leaders as I became a cub, scout, venturer, rover, leader and now fellowship member. Now I am proudly a Queen Scout and a Baden Powell Scout and I will always stand up, stand up for Scouts as I cannot guarantee that I would have even made it through my youth without my scouting family. I am proudly a member of the Gosnells Lions and the local Santa Claus each year in Gosnells and Southern River on the back of the Lions Christmas sleigh as we traverse the streets every December. And can I say, Madam Acting Speaker, as a candidate and now MP, it has been interesting door knocking my local homes and having my horrified students answer the door. <laughs> but nothing beats being dressed as Santa and knowing all the local teenagers' names as Santa goes past on the sleigh, leaving them very confused. <laughs> now, balloons are a big part of my life. Since my best friend Mo gave me an incredible book by Dr Patch Adams almost 15 years ago. Patch wrote about his drive to make things better than what they were, and for him, medicine and clowning were a vehicle to achieve this. Mo and I began working with balloons and running motivational workshops. We learnt to make balloon animals. We started visiting hospitals with aged care and aged care homes with balloons. Now, I'm not sure if the Health Minister will still allow me to visit our emergency waiting rooms with balloons, but it may be that we, uh, Mo and I, visit you one night and take you with us. Now, I was also lucky to be part of a group that brought Patch Adams to Perth to speak to WA medical professionals and the Fremantle community. Our local medical teams responded very well, and I would love to bring Patch back to WA again. I am very proudly an advocate for blood donation and made my first bleed when I was 17. And as a universal ONEG donor, I just started donating every fortnight. Last year, making that regular diary, diary appointment made me the youngest person in Australia to have made 300 blood donations. Now, this is a title that I am keen to relinquish. I am very happy that two of my local 17-year-olds, one of whom is here tonight, Tanun Sanjador and Luke Thomas, have begun donating blood already with the plan to beat my record, and nothing will make me happier. <laughs> there are, of course, some things that need to change with Red Cross and move with the times. We need for the Therapeutic Goods Administration to amend the discriminatory practices of its blood donation regulations for gay and bisexual men. The regulations are not based on a rational risk assessment, but rather an unfounded 1980s fear that there was some kind of inherent link between being gay and having AIDS. We should screen donors, but instead of screening donors on the gender of their sexual partner, we should screen them for the safety of their sexual activity. It doesn't matter if you're gay or straight, if you have activity that puts you at high risk, you shouldn't be able to donate. If you're at low risk, you should. Now, I became aware of this when I brought groups of my friends in to donate, and some who were gay were turned away, to their and my embarrassment. I sought the advice of a great Australian, Rodney Croom, some 15 years ago, and I decided not to protest this issue by ceasing to give blood, but to donate every fortnight and raise it in every one of my interviews, at every donation. And I'll continue to lobby the TGA and support the work of many who fight for this cause. And I continue to seek more blood donations. For those that are able to, I issue the challenge to all parliamentarians to make one blood donation this year. 
National Blood Donor Week is next month in June, and I've organised for a bus to collect the first group of MLAs and MLCs <laughs> of all parties in that week, and I will send you all the details. I will also be seeking to encourage my local high schools to develop further their youth blood donor programs. And that acting speaker, can I, I ask for an extension? Extension granted. Now my university studies began at Curtin, and I owe so much to the life skills and relationships that came from my time at Curtin University and as Curtin Guild President. I certainly mention Mo Meredith, Jane Dan Hollander, Lance Toomey, Val Robenheimer, and my fellow student representatives as incredible Curtin influences on me during this time. Now my Curtin journey is also how and why I joined the Labor Party. The Gallup Labor government made a promise to restore Student Guild membership as part of its 2001 election. And I will admit that I was skeptical. As a Guild, we were approached by Graeme Giffard, Education Parliamentary Secretary to Alan Carpenter, and Kate Doust, who work with every WA Student Guild and every WA University to develop, negotiate and design what would become the Amenities and Services Fee legislation and which would improve the lives of thousands of students across WA. It was this consultation and commitment by these MPs that inspired me to join Labor and to start volunteering my time at every election since. I saw that when we as a party of progressives stood together, we could achieve more. That consultation and mediation with community and government, coupled with a majority of MPs in Parliament, meant that we could, together, enact worthwhile and lasting change. My Curtin studies also gave me the opportunity some seven years ago to interview Mark McGowan as a shadow minister as part of my Masters of Public Policy when I did a paper on political and ministerial influence on the public policy cycle. And I still remember our now Premier when he stated that evidence-based policies were far superior in policy strength and better for the community than projects based on egos or whims. One example of that is that we need a Canning Vale train line, not only because the community tells us so, but because research and evidence shows it will address congestion, stimulate business and promote jobs, and not because a leader needs a monument to themselves. Now I am proudly a progressive. I believe the best days of our community are before us, not behind us. I believe that no matter what your postcode is, every person in WA deserves access to quality education, health and a safe community. And I believe in a more equal and equitable Australia. Mine is a family of migrants, and just because one group of Australians arrived here slightly before another group of Australians gives no one the right to hate or discriminate. Certain political parties make the decision to incite fear and hatred of migrants, Indigenous people and other groups for political gain. I will fight the racism and homophobia of any politician or party always. Now, I was also honoured to be in Canberra for the 2007 apology to the Stolen Generation and that Parliament's first ever Indigenous Welcome to Country. Our Indigenous community deserves respect and I seek to help restore that. I also seek to follow this up in action, not just words. And I was honoured to have Robert Isaacs and Renal Indich perform a traditional smoking and Welcome to Country ceremony at my electorate office when we moved in last month. And I congratulate the Speaker for inviting Mr Isaacs to be a part of this Parliament's opening last week. I would also favour, with consultation with our local elders, an acknowledgement of country into our Parliament's daily procedures. Now, these are important practices that are part of moving forward together as a community. Now, I've also been part of two great educational unions, the State School Teachers Union and United Voice, who represent some incredible educators in our teachers, education assistants, school cleaners and gardeners, core parts of our school communities. For me, being a union member is about consensus, bringing workers and employers together for the greater good, that we can have safe working conditions and equitable pay whilst also running a functioning business. It was my experience working as the union rep at my school that we would reach consensus, that we each had to give and take and negotiate, and the school, the students, the community was better for it. Now, whilst I am new here, I also have many friends here, many in our own caucus, but also some on the Conservative side. The member for Vass is a uni friend from mine, from Curtin. The member for Churchlands is one of my old high school teachers. Now I recall he and Mr Lestrange and uh, Mr Colombini once, who played Roman guards at our school Easter assembly, where I was Jesus, and they made, <laughs> they made me carry the crucifix to the front of the assembly and they crucified me. 
Well, Miss Lestrange, you have crucified me in the past. There may be one day in the future when I get to return the favour. <laughs> now, an incredible life moment for me was performing the very first same-sex marriage in Australia for my two good friends, Dennis Lidlow and Stephen Dawson. I've been a civil marriage celebrant for many years, and when the ACT declared that it would move ahead with marriage equality in December 2013, Dennis, Stephen and I discussed travelling to Canberra and being part of the celebrations where I would perform their wedding. With a core group of friends, we descended on Canberra the night of the law changing, then raced to the front steps of the Australian Parliament House on the stroke of midnight, and before a crowd of TV cameras and friends, we performed the very first same-sex marriage ceremony in the nation. Now, the ACT government had organised for the Telstra Tower that overlooks the parliament to change its light sequence. And as we finished the ceremony, the sky actually shone like a rainbow. Now, this parliament doesn't need another marriage equality advocate. It has enough already. And marriage equality should not still be an issue in 2017. In years to come, our children will wonder why this was even an issue. I believe marriage equality is already supported by an overwhelming majority of Australians. We're all just waiting for the federal parliament to have a free vote on it. Now, those laws will change, and Australia will have marriage equality soon. And on that day, we hope to conduct a marriage ceremony again, but this time at midnight on the steps of this WA parliament. And you are all, of course, invited. <laughs> now, as a teacher, I was also part of one of the many WA safe schools. I seek to place on record the good work that this program does in supporting all students. And there was mention during the election of a very hateful and anti-gay message that tried to hijack this program for its own purposes. Safe schools provide schools and teachers with anti-bullying resources to assist staff to support all students. It's not a gay lifestyle program, nor are my LGBTIQ students abnormal, as the former member for Southern River said to me at a school boardroom meeting. WA Labor's commitment is to fund this program so that those public high schools in WA that make a decision and choose to access the resources can. Now also tomorrow, May 17th, is the International Day Against Homophobia, Biophobia and Transphobia. And I'm proud to stand as the member of Southern River in this chamber to contribute to stamping out homophobia and hate. I also seek to call out gender inequality. I believe that men and women should be treated and represented equally. We will be a better Legislative Assembly if we actually represent the 50-50 gender balance of our community. Here in this chamber, only 18 women sit in the 59 seats. And this is more today than ever in this Parliament's history, but it's still not good enough. With the Legislative Council, with the legislative council only 30.53% of the Parliament are female. Labor in this place has 15 MLAs of, 40, of 41, or 36.5%. The Nationals have one female MLA, the Liberals have two, or 15 per cent. I quote one of my local predecessors' first speech, Sheila McHale. Women represent 50 per cent of the population, yet only 21 per cent of this House are women. That is not good enough for the community and it's not good enough for us. Madam Acting Speaker, that 21 per cent is now 30.5 per cent, but I reiterate Sheila McHale's words, that is not good enough for us and it is not good enough for the community. Now, we as a Labor Party need to actively recruit and support female candidates to meet and then exceed our affirmative action targets. We can always do better. And I do now turn to the Liberal and National Parties and ask that you adopt affirmative action targets, as I can't do this without you. Now, I called upon some female leaders, Amy Hart and Alison Murray, from Southern River College, to put this to you in their own words. We believe that in order for our parliament to be a reflection of our society, gender equity has to be achieved, with women making up 50% of parliamentary representatives. To us, as women who are about to graduate and enter society as active and engaged citizens, having representatives that reflect the population will ensure that everyone benefits. And in order to make laws for the benefit of all, the parliament must re represent the entire constituency. Madam Acting Speaker, my community of Gosnells and, Southern, and Gosnells and Southern River relies on jobs, training and employment to support their families and aspire to further pathways and opportunities in life. Training and skills development are the pathway out of certain cycles for my students and community. The unfair increases in TAFE fees hurt all West Australians, but my local residents felt that the most. We have already let down several years of young people 
who couldn't afford the debt that TAFE then represented. And it wasn't a matter of getting a loan. Many of my community couldn't even afford to repay the debt, so seats at TAFE went empty. And this will disadvantage my community for years to come. Many out of work, often former FIFO, local residents informed me during the campaign that they wanted to retrain, but even they couldn't afford the increase in training fees. The TAFE fees freeze is commendable, but the well over 500% of increases was irresponsible to begin with. And the freeze on fees for four years at least allows my community to plan their potential studies without fear of further increases. And TAFE should never be about whether you can afford the fees. TAFE is an incredible public institution that should be about access and equity. Now, residents of my electorate have just voted to support Labor to continue building rail lines in our community. And we will build the Thorny Line extension to Coburn and two very overdue Canning Vale train stations as part of Metronet. It is only Labor that has a track record in building rail in WA. Labor built the Mandurah Line, the Thornley Line, and Labor will build the Circle Line. We will finish what the previous Labor government began. Now I speak of the train lines we will build, the schools we will better maintain, the opportunities for aspiration that we will strengthen, but not only this does a community make. We need more community halls, more youth facilities, more sports fields and recreation facilities to provide for the thousands more families in my community. Now I believe that one of the other biggest issues in Gosnells and Southern River is reported and unreported domestic violence. It has been my experience that domestic violence in Gosnells and Southern River drives poverty and unemployment, homelessness, is a block to education and literacy, disadvantaged drug use and the cycles of crime that imprison my community and lock in cycles of disadvantage. It was my goal as a councillor to do more than we did. It will be my goal as a local member to do more than we do now. And I commend this government on appointing the state's first minister for the prevention of domestic and family violence. And Matt Keogh says it well. We must ensure that we have adequate, available and fully supported domestic violence services and adequately funded legal assistance and community education. And I will work with the federal member for BERT to achieve this. Now I mentioned I was brought to this place because a group of people threatened my school and my students. Well, now I have 15 schools that I stand as guardian over and I will protect them against those that will do them harm. I quote a great teacher, Professor Charles Xavier. I feel a great swell of pity for the poor soul that comes to my school looking for trouble. Mr. Madam Acting Speaker, I will work hard every day to continue to earn the trust placed in me. We now have so much work to do. Let's get to work. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.